Hello my soccer universe, I'm starting to feel it after the second upset of the tournament and the second video all within two days now it's real and in a way I was happy because the first upset is on a team that I really would like to win the whole thing now it's hitting Germany while this is probably the most likable German team since I'm a fan and I think there are quite a few players that I have uh, loads of sympathies for it's still Germany it's the eternal enemy of Austria <sighs> on the pitch nothing else so yeah and Germany as we will see are already in pretty big trouble because these guys Spain here put on a show they put on a real show and I said as much in the um, uh, short videos that I made. The other group, Group F, uh, snooze fest between Morocco and Croatia, but Canada really played out their heart and soul and lost. And this was one of those losses that could be characterized because they should have at least gotten a draw. I mean, I think they would have deserved the win over Belgium. They were, they were really good for most of, of the game, especially in the first half. And Belgium has one chance and scores the goal. And they're just a little bit more experienced. Let's put it that way. Despite playing a stinker of a match. So uh, that was really uh, the day. Of course, we have another update from the protest front. I think I, di I didn't mention yesterday. Seemingly, there will not be huge sanctions for Iran. We also have injury update that Lucas Hernandez is out for France. And Harry Kane has also had his ankle scan. So he might be out for the next game. Don't think it will matter much for England against the US. But who knows? But the big one was, before we go into the Germany-Japan game, that uh, the German FA had already been saying, you know, we have been under, put on a lot of pressure to not wear the one love armband. And the players kind of made that point by posting in their team picture. Like this. Now, uh, if I'm really... Uh, I actually want to laud them for actually making this gesture. Because that was a pretty clear statement there. It just fell flat because they lost entry to, to Japan af, 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 afterwards and so they shut themselves up and then they really had to shut up because um, yeah it was just not good good, good, good enough. Uh, but also the um, minister for the interior of, of Germany was also visiting sitting next to Gianni Infantino with a one love armband and real discussions there happening as well. So I just thought this was an interesting sideshow. I really hope that we can concentrate on the happenings on the pitch from now on, and that's what we're going to do right now. Talking about Germany against Japan. Uh, this was such a parallel in many a way to what happened yesterday between Argentina and so on, Saudi Arabia. Yes, Japan scored early, but it was a clear offside. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I also have to say, I did not see really the first half of the game. But I, I saw the highlights a little, a little, a little bit later. Germany had full control of the game, but Japan, an organized team that can be rather quick and can hurt you on the counter and so on. So, in that sense, uh, it was always going to be an interesting game. But Germany had firm control. However, they're missing, you know, a, a focal point up front. However, they get a penalty. The Japanese goalkeeper, who actually played for half a year in the second division in Austria, I learned at Juan, who you know, this was uh, Keisuke Honda. Uh, was investing in this team for, for, for a while now they are I mean well somewhere in any in any case he played there for half a year so yeah that's what you get when you play in the Austrian second league um, he gave away a really really stupid penalty the Gundo and Dooley converted and then Harvard had even a goal disallowed for offside starting in the second half there were three big chances for Germany. I think it started with a shot by Gnabry, who typically went over. And I have a feeling, I mean, uh, many a shot is going a little bit too far straight, too high. Uh, could, could, could it be that something's with the ball? I don't know. I, I have not heard any complaints yet, but it doesn't. It looks suspicious in, in a way. Then uh, Jamal Musiala dances through the Japanese uh, defense and doesn't get the shot, shot of anything. And Gundogan even shot hits the outside of, of the post. German make it there 2-0, they're never gonna lose that game. It has to be clearly said, and uh, Japan then uh, took the chance of the moment. And they had already a big, big chance that Neuer needed to save, and then I think the rebound 
should have been con 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 converted. And then uh, Rizzo Doan uh, puts in uh, a rebound after another Neuer save, uh, where the Japanese within a few minutes had two really dangerous counterattacks. And that's exactly what I'm expected from Japan uh, coming. And then Germany open up, they bring a Götze, they bring a full crook, we are, go we are moving forward and they get called out. Uh, Itakura plays a deep ball onto Asano and, uh, and then the German defense. You see Schlotterbeck wants to play an offside as does the rest of the German fans except for Niklas Süle. And then Schlotterbeck is far away and Asano can run straight onto goal. And the, the defensive frailties don't stop there because even Manuel Neuer, who is this absolute super goalkeeper, when you look at it on, on, the, on the replay, I mean, when Asano took the shot, I thought there's no chance this, because then Neuer is there. But if you see it, he takes the near the corner and Neuer is moving out of the shot, opening up the lane and the ball can, can, can go in. This is something that he will definitely want to have back. Definitely want to have back. Uh, it was not a good good goal on him, and then uh, Japan, Japan uh, stayed organized and held held on. There was not really a chance for Ger for Germany anymore. Um, instinctively, again, I think this is in many uh, many a way the most likable German German team since I'm a football fan, especially when I look at the likes of Müller or Goretzka, how outspoken they are on all kinds of issues. Um, and even after match, you don't get canned answers really from them. So I really enjoyed that. And there is, you know, I find some liking to them. However, instinctively, I was just laughing and yeah, <laughs> Japan beat Germany. So yeah, uh, it was really, 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 really cool, uh, that one. And things got worse for Germany because then Spain went on to beat uh, Costa Rica by seven goals and dazzled the crowd, really dazzled the crowd. Uh, great pass move. This was Tiki Taka uh, with a little bit of a physicality to it, but this was uh, Spain at its very, very, very best. And I said it in a short video, Costa Rica is probably among all of uh, among all the teams there together with Australia and, you know, post potentially Qatar. Um, one of the teams that I have the feeling that should not be at this World Cup because uh, the way they qualified already was not so con convincing and they're coming out of a weaker con 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 confederation. So I always thought that Costa Rica will be outmatched, that they're going to be 7 nil outmatched. That was not something that, that, that I expected. I also did not expect that Kayla Navas makes such an uh, error on the Asensio, Asensio goal which was beautifully played and the way that Asensio pulls, it pull, puts in a shot, but Navas has, has his hand on, on there. This is something that he definitely would want to have back. Then they give away a penalty, Ferran Torres, um, <laughs> the boyfriend of Luis Enrique's uh, daughter, which I find really, really funny, uh, converts the pen penalty and then he does one off after they have. Uh, and then the game kind of fell a little bit, bit asleep. Then there came some ye uh, yellow card and, and, and so on. And then in the end, it picked up, uh, up again. We know when the old guys came out and the new guys came in, or you know, uh, Morata for Torres, Solea for Petri, um, you know, uh, Balde for Alba, Koke, you know, uh, kind of checking that uh, even Nico Williams come coming out for Asensio. So uh, he took care, um, rested, rested, rested a few players, and the other one said, Yeah, we want to be part of the team too. And Gavi scored a really nice goal after a Morata assist. Carlos Soler uh, puts one the Morata himself after Daniel Dani Olmos. Is. It was really, really impressive what Spain were showing. And at this point, they have to be considered one of the co-favorites uh, for this title. I think this, again, we have to take Costa Rica out of the other video. When I saw Iran against England, I think that Iran played better against England than what Costa Rica did against Spain. So we definitely have to take that out of it. But it was a statement. It was a statement that puts Germany under a heap of pressure. I will go to the stands a little a little bit later. Uh, just on Group F, I really got to say that Morocco against Croatia was another snooze fest. Uh, at the end of the first half, Croatia had a few chances. Uh, Morocco will be a team that's hard to beat. That much I can already tell. I uh, have a lot of support from the crowd, but honestly, it was just uh, dull, dull, dull. 
and uh, not much to talk about. I want to talk about jersey matchup because it's a rather remarkable decoration now. I have a jersey that's majority white. If they would have a checkered jersey um, like normally where it's all full checkers, I don't think they would have worn that one against Morocco who play in red and green. But having the all white jersey, that actually works for them. So I found that a uh, rather intriguing uh, observation. And let's turn the page on that one and talk about Belgium against Canada. Uh, first things first, I heard it this morning, but it's really uh, those two teams go so well together because from Belgium are the waffles and what do you need waffles with Canadian maple syrup? It just is a, ma a match made in heaven. Uh, I expected actually quite some stuff and especially the first half did not disappoint, especially Canada did not but The first few exchanges were going back and forth a little, a little bit and then Canada actually took control of the game. Got a penalty after a handball uh, through Alfonso Davy. Uh, through uh, you know the handball was by Carrasco. Alfonso Davies takes the penalty, and Courtois sees it saved. And uh, it was so weird because the penalty was given and the referees uh, doing something, and you could see that Courtois the whole time was kind of making these moves. And this would have been Canada's first World Cup goal. So I mean, there's immense pressure on there and against one of the best keep 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 keeps in the world, and then the penalty was not good, and. I, I, I was thinking if Couture is the whole time pointing that I'm gonna go in this corner, you're gonna shoot in this corner, then you shoot in this corner because he will go the other corner. I've seen this with with me with Couture, whatever. Canada should have had two more penalties, and I think it was the first time that I really thought that the refereeing was off. Um, that was a referee that um, cut the Mali-Tunisia game at the AFCON early this year short by a few minutes because of a heat stroke. Didn't happen this time, but I felt that especially our, um, there was one clear pen second penalty in there. The third one, uh, I think the one by, uh, by Witzel, you could see that the Canadian player, when you look at it in slow motion, that he is dangling the leg a little bit outside to get the contact, and maybe that's why they call it, but the one uh, from... I think Vertonghen, uh, the death father, uh, there was a clear penalty to me. Canada should have had at least, at least one more penalty. And then it happens what happens, Alta World uh, plays a deep ball over the Canadian defense and Bacuai puts it in the net before the half. Canada kept trying but had a really hard time. It became then very, um, you know, not very exact in the passing. And in the, and in the end, Larin has another co uh, header, I was about to say Kopfball, which is in German, Another header uh, that is it was easy safe for uh, Courtois, uh, and then in, in in the end I really thought that Belgium maybe could have if they would be a little bit sharper could have probably had made a second goal which would not have been deserved. De Bruyne being strangely anonymous in that game. So yeah, I feel bad for Canada. I really wanted them to get them something out of this game. Maybe it will happen. I think this is not the last time we hear from them for sure. Um, in the standings, you know, you see already when you look in the group, group B standings, it's Japan and Spain, of course, on top. But you see at the chance of reaching a knockout stage, Germany is only at 30% at this moment. This is huge. And basically, the next game is East against Spain, which is a must win. Uh, if Japan early on beats Costa Rica, Germany better beat Spain. Because if they only get a draw, then they have to match Spain and they have to match them on goal difference. So, uh, huge pressure on Germany already and they need to deliver. Whereas in the other group, yeah, but not much has changed overall. Uh, maybe Morocco's chances have a little bit improved, but you know, uh, Belgium is still a uh, favor to go on. Uh, which we also see in the projections. I mean, it's basically one-to-one, -one, world world what we've seen before. Uh, Japan now ahead of Germany. And if you go now to the uh, bracket, the projected bracket, uh, the only real change is that Japan now replaces Germany. And again, uh, Argentina, thanks to being the second highest ranked team, despite having lost. Because on the lower branch, they will make it all the way to the final. I know it seems a little bit nonsensical, but this is the way it turns out. And, you could see that. I mean, Argentina has precedent with that for losing the opener in 1990. They made it an all the way, way, way to final. It is not that uncommon for it to happen. You just don't win. I think uh, there are not many teams that have lost the first game and then won the World Cup. That's maybe something I should look into. I want to say Germany in 58, but I'm not 100, uh, 54, but I'm not 100% on that. 
uh, as for the favorites for the tournament not much has changed uh, Brazil France and Spain Belgium just ahead of uh, in, in, in but this is minuscule stuff forget about it Argentina also the they are very even limit because Argentina has such a high high rating so not much but Germany fell now into 11th and I uh, have a very low percentage of making it out of, of, of Totico, which is staggering, absolutely staggering. And hello, Japan, you're also now in the top 20. Uh, as for the fixtures for tomorrow, we have Africa is coming. It will be a Puma day. Switzerland against Cameroon. Uh, and if Cameroon will play in the ugly jerseys, they should play also with Puma because that's Cam Cameroon is for me, Puma. Then Uruguay, South, South Korea. Everyone's talking about Uruguay, Ghana, but they... Uruguay and South Korea made in the, uh, met in a round of 16 at the 2010 World Cup, so it's also a rematch. And then we have Portugal, Ghana. Curious what the um, uh, Portuguese stars will do, but I'm really stoked for Brazil against Serbia. That, I think, will be a really, really good game. And I really want to see what Brazil is made of in that one. So that was it from me for uh, today. Again, it's late. I showed it right after the matches. Um, uh, give me your thoughts on the game today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.